Allison. I'm the Programs, Outreach, and Youth Services Manager here at Monterey County Free Libraries. Thanks for joining me today for Book Chat. Um, today I'm going to talk about a book that is well outside the realm of what I normally read. I pretty much only read fiction geared at children, um, being that I'm one of the youth services librarians. But with all that's going on in the world right now, I knew that it was time for me to expand my reading horizons for my own personal growth and education. Um, so I read and I'm talking about today, I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. Um, this had appeared on a lot of recommended lists, so I figured it was a good place to start. Um, a little bit about the author from the back of the book. Austin Shanning Brown is a writer, speaker, and practitioner who helps schools, nonprofits, and religious organizations practice genuine inclusion. This book is a memoir, and it is 182 pages long. I finished this in one afternoon, uh, and it really changed a lot of things that I, as a middle-class white woman, definitely take for granted and, you know, didn't even really realize that I was um, taking for granted, you know, and haven't, haven't given a lot of thought to in my everyday life, which is something that I'm trying to change. Um, and part of the reason why I wanted to start expanding my reading horizons to help me change and become more aware. One of just many examples, but something that really stuck with me, um, is when the author talks about her experience walking through a store as a child. So I'm going to read you a little portion the author says, following my dad through the toy section of the party store, I picked up a little trinket that caught my attention. Don't even think about it, he said, shooting me down before I could debate whether or not to ask him to buy it. I sighed, put the trinket back, and stuffed my hands into the pockets of my overalls, willing myself not to be tempted again. My father glanced back at me, but when he noticed my little fist bulging from my pockets, he stopped in the middle of the aisle and turned all the way around. Don't do that, he said sternly. Do what, I wondered to myself. I had long ago learned to tame my smart mouth with my dad. Was he now reading my mind? Don't ever do that, he repeated more softly this time, bending his six-foot-two frame toward me to let me know I wasn't in trouble. But I was still confused. What had I done wrong? Even if you put it back on the shelf, Austin, you can't touch store products and then put your hands in your pockets, he explained, as his large hands gently removed mine from their denim hiding place. Someone might notice and assume you were trying to steal not something that I've ever had to think about um, you know and it definitely opened up my eyes to a different perspective um, another example of that is she's talking about how she didn't see herself represented in classrooms um, whether it was you know the teachers that were teaching her were white her classmates were predominantly white the material was white um, and that was something I had thought about but not down to different metaphors or the word choice that teachers use. So I'm gonna read another section um, where she's talking about the first time that she had a black educator in her life and the difference that it made. The gift of Professor McMath's presence went beyond the fact that she looked like me, though that was special all by itself. The true gift was that I didn't have to create my own sense of belonging in her class. In every previous classroom, I had been responsible for decoding teachers' references to white middle-class experiences. It's like when you're sailing, or you know how when you're skiing you have to? My white teachers had an unspoken commitment to the belief that we are all the same. A default setting that masked for them how often white culture bled into the curriculum. For example, when teachers wanted to drive home the point that we should do something daily, they often likened it to how you wash your hair every morning. It never occurred to them that none of the black girls in the class did this. Knowing it was true for white people and having gotten used to white teachers' assumption of universality, we would all nod our heads and move on. Who had time to teach the teacher? I found that really powerful and thought-provoking because, like I said, while I had thought about the absence of black teachers or you know, going to school in a predominantly white school, I had never thought about how the language that we use, the very basic language that we use and the metaphors and the comparisons that we make 
do pull from a white world. And that was really eye-opening for me to start examining what I do in my speech and the ways that that could be possibly exclusionary to certain people. Um, so I thought that was really, really interesting. There was a lot packed into this book, a lot to think on and a lot to reflect on. And those was, this is one of those books that you're going to want to reread um, over and over because you're going to discover new things and you're going to find different parts that are going to make you think about new ideas and spark some new way of thinking about your own life, your own experience, your own perspective, um, particularly if you're white. Um, cause I know that, you know, going through this in one afternoon, I definitely didn't pick up all the richness and the things that I can reflect on, um, that I'll probably get on a second, third, fourth pass through and find new ideas. Even when I was going through to try and mark passages for this little segment, I knew I was forgetting some of the ones that stood out when I was reading it and I should have brought the bookmarkers when I was reading it. I want to end with one final passage that I found, again, particularly thought-provoking. Um, and this is during a, a section where the author is talking about how after speaking at conferences, she'll often have white folks come up to her and tell them about a time that they were racist or had a racist thought or a racist relative or something, and how she likened it to they're almost coming to her for absolution from these thoughts and to help them kind of get over it. And what a burden that was for her to listen to these things that really struck home for her and were hurtful to her. Um, but by telling them, the white person felt better. And how, you know, messed up, honestly, that was that the white person walks away feeling better after putting the burden back on the person of color. Um, and so after a while, she decided that she was going to put the burden back on the person sharing the story with her and try to help them better themselves. Um, and I, I like this passage a lot. So I don't accept confessions like these anymore. Nowadays, when someone confesses about their racist uncle or that time they said the N-word, I determine to offer a challenge toward transformation. For most confessions, this is as simple as asking, so what are you going to do differently? The question lifts the weight off my shoulders and forces the person to move forward, resisting the easy comfort of having spoken the confession. The person could, of course, dissolve into excuses, but at that point, the weight of the decision belongs to them and not me. And I think that is the real point that you should walk away with um, from this book chat, at least. Now that you have heard a tiny, tiny portion of this person's experience that I've read to you today, what are you going to do differently moving forward? Thanks for joining me for book chat. I hope that you'll check out this book and other titles that we have available um, by authors of color, by black authors about their personal experiences and also just some of their awesome fiction that they've written. Um, we have tons of resources available to you, different books for you to check out. We've also got an anti-racist book list on our website that I'll hope you'll look into. And let me know in the comments what books you're reading to uh, further your education and your personal growth. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye.